What I would do differently is I would not. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how to start a YouTube channel in 2021. Is it too late to start one? No, it's not. Keep watching, I'm gonna show you everything you need to know and how to succeed coming up. What's up guys? So you might be asking yourself right now, should I start a YouTube channel? I'm not really sure. You know, I heard the best time is during quarantine. Quarantine's kind of almost over. It's still a good time to start one. I'm gonna tell you why here in just a second. I'm gonna show you everything you need to know in this video, what I've done, what I would do now, what I wouldn't do, what I would do differently. And in most cases, some people are still staying home because they really don't wanna go outside in fear of being exposed to COVID. So it's still the best time to start one and to be able to grow your channel. This video applies to whatever your genre is going to be. You could be starting a YouTube channel for vlogs, teaching, ministry, comedy, how-tos, tech videos, entertainment videos. This covers a wide variety on if you're starting a YouTube channel, you know, what I would do, what I wouldn't do, um, and things that uh, will help you, uh, you can find in this video. First things first, you have to know your why. Why do you want to start a YouTube channel? Are you wanting to create content? Are you trying to uh, be famous? Do you want to pay bills? You want to have extra money? Is it your passion? Is it your hobby? Know your why and then we can go from there. Tons of people are actually living their dreams, creating content, uploading it to YouTube and being really successful at it. But it doesn't just stop there. It's more than just recording and uploading a video. I'm going to show you some of the tools that you actually need, uh, such as keyword research, uh, how to get found, how to be searchable on YouTube and how to rank and search. I'm also going to be sharing with you some of my personal experiences, some things that you haven't heard and you will not hear anywhere else. All right, guys, so the first thing you want to do is you want to come up with a name for your channel. My name for my channel is just Quincy Moreland. Now, at first, it was Quincy Moreland skits and vlogs. So what do you do? Do you specialize in, you know, fashion, photography, uh, comedy, um, how-to videos? You want to get a name around what you do for your channel. This way you can begin to create videos based off of your name or off of your, your theme for your channel. Now, of course, what you don't want to do is you don't want to put yourself in a box. So if you want to do videos on photography, you don't want to just do videos on cameras. You want to leave yourself a little wiggle room so you can do media, which covers camera, lighting, audio, and that way you have more videos that you can make. This is just an example for that field. But if yours was makeup, you don't just want to do makeup. Maybe you can blend it in with how to do makeup wearing these clothes, how to do makeup for a date, a job interview review. This way you have an umbrella to work with and you're not just limiting yourself when you're picking your niche. Most people ask, you know, do I have to go out and buy a DSLR camera, a high expensive camera? And the answer is no, you don't. I've uploaded about four or five videos to my YouTube channel that you're watching right now off of my iPhone. It creates great quality videos, HD, and a lot of them in 4K. You can upload the video to YouTube straight from your phone. iPhones come with iMovie or you can download iMovie. And you do not need Final Cut Pro, you know, all these high-end softwares. Um, now, it will make it a little easier if you want to be able to see on a bigger screen and edit, you know, real quick. If you don't have any money for any of that, you can record a video on your phone and edit it on your phone. I have a good friend of mine I've known for years, and he made three or four music videos all on his phone, and he's probably watching this video, and I give him major kudos because I'm like, man, you did that on your phone? I don't have the patience for that. So the videos that I did upload off of my phone were simple edits, um, but it could definitely be done. My number one tip right now, if you have content that you wanna make, record your first video. Do not try to make it super professional like all of these big YouTubers that are currently out there um, feeling like you're trying to compete with them. No, you have to start somewhere. So my advice to you would be to record that first video and post it. Put that first video up and you can critique it later. Once you get your channel to where you want, you can always go back and delete that video if you really want to. Now, posting your video will be the hardest thing you will ever do because I understand you want to be perfect, you want everything done right, and they're never publishing it. And then, of course, the second hardest part is telling everybody that you started a YouTube channel and to go check out your video. Because once you do that, not everybody's going to want to go flood your YouTube channel, watch it, like it, thumbs up, or even comment. And then they see that you started a YouTube channel and they're like, oh, who do they think they are? I 
never forget when I had 300 and something subscribers, I told someone um, at my job and they said, yeah, I don't, I don't support them people on YouTube, you know, doing all that YouTube stuff. And, you know, uh, now, you know, at 4,500 subscribers, I just remember that comment and it stuck with me, you know, and, and that's why you have to know your why. So no matter what you're doing, what field, why do you want to do this? You know, are you creating an archive of all of your family videos? Are you uh, providing something of value so that when people search on uh, Google and YouTube, you know, you pop up as the answer, as the result for what they're looking for. And so therefore you're providing value, showing them how to do something or showing them, you know, the answer to what they're looking for. And that's where I came along with the social media tips and tricks. And, you know, lately on my channel, we talk about YouTube and TikTok, but there will be those people and this is where you have to weed out the ones that will support you. And most people that support me are strangers. I'm going to put it out there. Most people that will support you will be total strangers. It's not going to be your friends and family. I thank God for friends and family. But everybody has their own thing going on. And if you think about it, everybody that you ask can't support you because everyone's being pulled in different directions. It's not that they don't want to, but... It's just the way it is. So just like I mentioned, in order to be successful on YouTube, you have to be the answer to what people are searching for. So for me, I'm doing uh, tips and tricks on uh, uh, TikTok how-to videos. And whether it's how to do a certain feature, you know, I create a video on that. I find out how to do it and I make the video. So when people are searching for it, boom, I pop up. So if it's for you and, you know, you're wanting to, you know, how to do anything, study that craft or either already already know how to do it make the video and it, it can just be you know talking you know it can just be audio you don't even have to be in front of the camera it can just be audio and a picture thumbnail you know uh almost like a screensaver showing during the whole video but you're telling them how to do something you know and if you tag that with the right tags and keywords um and get a nice you know thumbnail picture that video can take off sooner than later you'll have a thousand subscribers you need to have four thousand watch hours to get monetized and then you're on your way one of the things you definitely need to have is a banner at the top of your uh, YouTube page um, it needs to be nice it needs to be somewhat professional somewhat presentable that way when people land on your page they see that this is a channel that you know I want to be subscribed to something professional not you know rinky dink not boring you know not just some random banner you know of you like yo <laughs> you also want to make sure you have a nice profile picture as well to match that banner they actually go hand in hand what do I use to edit my videos I've bounced around a couple of times I do use Final Cut Pro um, I do have iMovie as well. Um, they do have certain built-in features that are different from one another. Um, occasionally, like I said, I'll use iMovie on my uh, iPhone. For my thumbnails, I use pickmonkey.com. I also have Photoshop as well. They do have different features. Um, if you ever notice the thumbnails on YouTube where everyone's traced out or outlined with the white you know, uh, tracing uh, that's done in Photoshop. I've done um, one of those. Um, it's cool. It is time consuming to do the tracing, but I use Photoshop for that. And uh, PicMonkey does not have that feature. So my hardest thing when coming up with the YouTube channel was, what can I see myself doing week after week? Um, you know, whether it's one video a week or twice a week, what can I see myself filming and doing over and over, week after week. What can you see yourself doing day after day that you like? And so I started off my YouTube channel doing comedy and skits. Um, and there were some videos that got some traction um, and a lot of my uh, audience came from TikTok. But after a while, it became hard to make a lot of those comedy videos and I still will do them. But I randomly threw up a video on how to do something on TikTok and it took off with 15,000 views. And I was like, whoa! And I knew that I was already on TikTok and I said, oh wow, okay, I'll base my YouTube channel on how to do this and how to do that. Um, and I haven't turned back since. So my encouragement to you is it's going to be probably hard to find out what exactly do you want to talk about. And my advice is to try five or six or ten random different things that you know that you're good at either showing or talking about or speaking about. What five or six videos can you create in that field? Um, and maybe the video is only five minutes a piece uh, just to see which ones take off. But like I said, it's more than just uploading a video. It's coming up with the title of the video, the thumbnail, 
um, using the right hashtags in the video, which do help you get discovered. And of course, filling out your description and making sure that you do SEO, which is search engine optimization, to make sure you get ranked in Google and ranked on uh, YouTube as well. Now, I do wanna tell you what I would do differently. What I would do differently is I would not do sub for sub. I won't say it'll mess up your channel. Let's just say you start from zero and you do sub for sub and now you have 200 uh, subscribers. Well, eventually it's gonna dwindle down to 145 because at some point everyone's gonna unsub from you because they really don't wanna see you in their subscriber feed, you know, because they really don't like your channel. They just wanted to get that subscriber number just as well as you did. And so when I got ready to meet a thousand subscribers and uh, 4,000 watched hours, at a thousand subscribers, it kept going down, coming back up, going down, coming back up. Um, and it went from 980 to 960 to now it's at a thousand. And then once it did cross a thousand, it was at a thousand and three, and then it dropped to 999. And I'm like, okay, what's going on here? And I realized it's because of the sub for sub that, you know, so I stopped doing sub for sub uh, right around seven hundred subscribers so at 730 subscribers I stopped doing sub for sub because I wanted and I read somewhere that YouTube would notice and uh, do their homework and see that most of your subscribers are sub for sub and in the comments it was sub for sub so I wanted 300 after 700 I wanted 300 real dedicated subscribers and legit comments from all those new 300 and something people um, now, I did start off my YouTube channel with 300, so I want to say 400 of that, give or take, not 400 were sub for sub, but out of that 400, probably a good 300 were sub for sub. Uh, most of the rest of them came from TikTok. Um, so don't do that to your channel. I would just grind, put in the work, create the awesome content, make awesome thumbnails, um, make sure you know what you're talking about, have fun while doing it, and you know, uh, tell your friends, family, make good titles, good descriptions, and hey, you, you got this. Because what you don't wanna happen is right when you get ready to cross that thousand uh, subscriber mark and get ready to reach those 4,000 watch hours, you find out that you can't get monetized because the people who all sub for sub for your channel are not really watching and they're also dropping off like flies. Make time to edit your videos. You know, me, I like to record a video and then edit it um, right after and spend two hours or three hours editing it and then I'll post it <laughs> late at night and I had to stop doing that. I had to find the best times to post which are usually between 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. Um, and I had to learn how to record a video and then record it on a different day. That way I, the sun's out, it's right in the afternoon or the middle of the day, I don't feel rushed. I'm thinking straight and I have all the time in the world to put my all into it whereas I would record a video in the past and spend the evening trying to edit the video and then I'm falling asleep and sometimes I would post it anyway and it wouldn't get the amount of likes and subscribers that it could have gotten had I um, edited it in the daytime and then posted it at a peak time that you know a lot of my subscribers are on YouTube. Do you want to have 100 subscribers, 300? Uh, 5,000, 10,000, these are realistic goals. Even in a year, having 15 to 20,000 subscribers is realistic. Um, I have seen people uh, that had 40,000 subscribers in a year time and blew up to 90, and now she has 500 and something thousand uh, subscribers. Um, and it was all because she lived in a city that was a tourist city and she took advantage of that. So what do you have at your uh, disposal that people want to know or want to see, you know, and you are right there in the midst of it? Take advantage of that, you know, um, use that, you know, and begin, begin to create videos about it. So most of my videos I use tags. Um, I use TubeBuddy. TubeBuddy will be a link in the description below. TubeBuddy has helped me out majorly on finding the right uh, uh, titles for my videos, the right tags to use. It saved me a lot of time by showing me uh, what tags are 
competitive, um, what are good ones to use, what are actually uh, scoring low, um, and that really won't help out my channel or my video. TubeBuddy is also responsible for most of my videos being recommended to other viewers. You can try out TubeBuddy for free by clicking the link in the description, and they also have uh, memberships. With each membership, you get more that is offered um, of value and can really help your channel grow. That is it for how to start a YouTube channel in 2021. Go ahead and comment with any questions or concerns. I can try to answer those as soon as possible. Let me know if there's anything that I did not cover in this video that you would love for me to answer. Um, I can do that for you. And you can also DM me on Instagram. Um, I respond a lot quicker there as well. And also, if you are on TikTok, you can find me on TikTok and the link below as well. All right, guys. Hey, I will see you soon for more videos. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel. That way, I can continue to bring you valuable content like this that you are searching for that will help you on your journey growing your channel on YouTube.